Hey everybody, I'm Chad Hasty, host of the Chad Hasty Show, which airs on News Talk 790 KFYO in Lubbock, weekday mornings, 8.30 to 11 a.m. Central Time. You can listen online at KFYO.com. Don't forget, subscribe below to our KFYO YouTube channel where you can view all the latest interviews and morning briefs and all that kind of great stuff right here on YouTube. If you've missed out on the show lately, well, you've missed a bunch of candidates who have come through the studio and contacted us via phone uh, to uh, talk about their campaigns as we enter uh, early voting and day three of early voting today. A lot of people heading to the polls and a lot of discussion still being held on this Texas 19 race, which was what we're going to talk about a little bit here on the morning brief this morning. I haven't gotten a lot of time to really talk about this race. Why? Because I've had a lot of candidates uh, in studio this week. So I want to talk about the Michael Bob Starr campaign. Uh, obviously, he's been in the news quite a bit. Breitbart, Texas, with a piece over the weekend detailing uh, some events where Colonel Starr, who uh, during the Faith and Family Forum earlier in this campaign, uh, came out a, a very very pro-family, pro-traditional marriage, uh, uh, anti-gay marriage uh, type of candidate, uh, you know, said all the right talking points uh, that uh, you would hear in a conservative area, conservative West Texas, in a Republican primary. Uh, well, Breitbart, Texas, uh, they dug up some photos, and really it wasn't that hard to dig them up there right there on Facebook, of Colonel Michael Bob Starr participating in Pride Days, uh, a gay pride uh, fun run, I guess you could say, in 2014 and in 2015. One of them, uh, I believe, was a color run. I think that was the one in 2015. But he was running with the Pride Alliance on Dias Air Force Base. Now, the Pride Alliance at Dias Air Force Base, they are not about promoting Dias Air Force Base or having great pride in Dias Air Force Base. The Pride Alliance at Dias Air Force Base is an LGBT uh, community. It's a, a group of a gay and lesbian um, military members uh, and, and non-military, non-gay or lesbian uh, military members. It's people who uh, kind of like a support group, if you will. Uh, if you uh, go back to some of these other fun runs that you've seen, uh, in a, a uh, like Dallas Pride uh, is not about having pride in Dallas. It's more about having pride uh, in the uh, gay and lesbian community, being you know having pride with who you are. Um, well, okay. Well, this is where a conflict comes into play here. Colonel Michael Bob Starr uh, ran in these races. He participated. Uh, and there's there's been some, I guess, confusion or controversy surrounding this. Uh, is Colonel Michael Bob Starr telling us one thing and then doing another thing? Uh, is he saying that he's pro-traditional marriage, anti-gay marriage, uh, the anti-gay lifestyle, uh, but he supported that lifestyle back in 2014 and 2015? That's been the big question. I really don't have a question about that, uh, to be completely honest with you. I think that Colonel Starr uh, probably participated in these races. Why? Because he was commander of Dias Air Force Base. He wanted to lift morale. He wanted to keep people together. It's a family. Uh, you try to keep a, a family co cohesive atmosphere on a military base, uh, and especially when sometimes it seems as though the military is under assault uh, out there uh, from the federal government, among others. So I understand uh, if Michael Bob Starr would have come out and listed that as the only reason, if he would have come out to the media and really only sent out a press release and said, look, guys, uh, I, I was commander of Dias Air Force Base. My job was to keep people together, uh, to show that uh, that uh, we are one big family and that while we may have disagreements, while I may not necessarily approve of your lifestyle or their lifestyle, uh, you don't turn your back on family and you don't turn your back on those who you serve with in the U.S. military. If he would have said that, that's something I believe. That's something that, that uh, I think a lot of people would go, Okay, that sounds about right. Don't know if I would have participated. Don't know if I would have worn the T-shirt or not. But okay, we see what you're saying. Uh, I've heard from many military members, those who are currently serving, those who are no longer serving but did at one time. Uh, they are all over the map on this. Some say that, yes, he should have participated. Some say, no, he shouldn't have participated. Uh, so what it seems like to me is that while he was under no obligation to participate, uh, he did and that's on him. Uh, he says that he still has no problem uh, with uh, doing that and participating in it. If you, the voters, have a problem with it, that's fair. That's up to you. What I do have a problem with, with Michael Bob Starr and his response to this, is 
his response to this. Uh, he has said that those who are bringing this up, is it's an attack on his military record. It's an attack on the men and women serving at Dias Air Force Base. It is simply not. Uh, if you are running as a conservative candidate, if you have said before in different forums, multiple forums, that you are anti-gay marriage, that you are anti-gay lifestyle, uh, that uh, you are pro-traditional marriage, and then pictures emerge of you, what seems like to a lot of other people, uh, if not embracing that, uh, saying, hey, I've got no problem with LGBT uh, events, people are going to ask questions. And it's fair to ask those questions. That's why we have a primary. It's why we have an election. It's why we have a press out there to ask these questions and say, hey, Colonel Starr, look, I know you say you're pro-family, you're pro-traditional marriage, uh, you've spoken out against gay marriage, but what about these pictures? How, does, how do these pictures line up with your views that you're telling the voters out there? Look, folks, when very little separates some of these candidates, and that's what I've heard about this race is, Chad, please tell me what separates these candidates. What are the big differences between these candidates? Guess what? When pictures emerge, it's going to be a big deal. doesn't matter if Breitbart Texas brought it up. doesn't matter if KFYO brought it up. Wouldn't it have mattered if KCBD brought it up? These these things matter. That's why we have an election. Uh, asking questions about what you participated in while at Dias Air Force Base is not an attack on the military. So I have a problem with Colonel Starr wrapping himself in that argument. I simply don't buy it. I also don't buy uh, when Colonel Starr uh, told Robert Pratt of Pratt on Texas, hey, it was just a Dias Pride Day. It was about promoting pride at Dias Air Force Base. Come on, give me a break. Uh, as I brought up earlier in an analogy, if the city of Dallas, uh, if they have a LGBT pride event and you see Dallas Pride on the T-shirt, they're not expressing pride in the city of Dallas and what all the city of Dallas does. Uh, the folks who are participating in that are expressing pride in being who you are and who they are, uh, and many of them are gay and lesbian. Pretty easy to see here, right? Uh, I don't think this is an attack on Dias Air Force Base. The Abilene Reporter News said, oh, this is a bunch of nothing. Uh, this is not a big deal. At the end of the day, is it a big deal? Maybe, maybe not. There are still a lot of issues that people in West Texas care about when it comes to traditional marriage and when it comes to the what some have labeled the LGBT agenda out there. We've talked about bakeries uh, that have uh, been attacked by uh, government for not uh, necessarily baking a cake for a gay couple. These are things that could come before Congress at some point. And these are things that a lot of people in West Texans actually care about and want their representative to vote with them. It also brings up this point. Uh, Colonel Starr, it seems, is deflecting criticism. He's trying to blame others here. He's trying to say, well, I was under orders to do this. Uh, you know, I, I, I took orders from up on high. Uh, I had to do this. Um, you know, hey, this is an attack on somebody else. How dare you do that? We hear a lot from those in Washington, D.C., a lot of our elected officials, whether it be a Republican or Democrat, who don't take responsibility for their actions. They don't take responsibility for the way they voted, and that's what voters are tired of. That is the politician way to deflect criticism. And that's what many are seeing from Colonel Michael Bob Starr. That's what I've seen from Colonel Michael Bob Starr is deflecting the criticism away from him and blaming somebody else. And that's just something that I don't think a lot of people like right now. Now, when it comes to Colonel Michael Bob Starr being a conservative, uh, when it comes to uh, some of the issues, I think he's been right on many of the issues. I think he has sounded good on many of the issues, just like other candidates in this race. But there are things that separate them. And uh, hopefully we will hear from Colonel Michael Bob Starr. He was not able to make it uh, on the show on Wednesday. He uh, did have an illness. He was at Covenant Hospital. So those who are saying that he completely ducked out, he did not. I talked with his campaign. We'll hopefully have him on in the the future. So once again, you know, for Colonel Michael Bob Starr, for me, it's not about, uh, you know, th this whole controversy for me is not about the fact that he participated in an LGBT fun run. That, that's not it for me. The big deal is how he handled it. Why? Because there are going to be many times, many times, uh, when if he elected Colonel Starr, if he's in Congress, if he's in Washington, D.C., there are going to be times where we disagree. 
there are going to be times where he is called on uh, why he voted a certain way. And what is he going to do? How is he going to respond to the media? Will he deflect criticism or will he accept the criticism and accept responsibility and come out to the voters and say, yes, I voted this way and here's why? It's a big question. Tune in to the Chad Eastie Show, weekday mornings, 8.30 to 11 on News Talk 790 KFYO. Don't forget, follow me on Twitter, Chad Eastie Radio. And, oh yeah, subscribe to KFYO on YouTube right below.